Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at converting older poser characters like Clank here with 3D exchange to work in iClone. Even though the character has a simple bone structure, it does contain at least one facial morph and a jaw bone. So we'll set the morph on the timeline, export the character into 3D exchange, and rig it for use in iClone, which is very simple thanks to the software gurus at Realusion. After that we'll go into iClone and check our animation rigging to see if it works. So let's get to it. Now Clank's always been a popular character, but he is an old one so he does have a simple bone structure. So what we're going to do is find out what he has available, and one way to do that is to click on the proper uh, places of the character. Now you can see in here we don't see any morphs, so we'll just keep clicking like until we find a jaw, a morph, or something. Now there's a morph, and that's a smile morph, which is really the only morph he has. So we're going to move from frame 0 to frame 1. We're going to leave frame 0 as neutral. We're going to go to frame 1 and I'm going to increase this to 100 percent. It's not exactly a huge smile either but it is at least something we can work with. So now we have our morph set. So I'm going to file. You could also save this as a scene if you had more complex morphs and drop this back over the character just like you do when you're doing a Genesis character. So once you get one rigged you can save this. But in this case it's simple so we're just going to export the character out. So we're going to, and you can see I've been through this before. So we're going to choose Clank and then make sure that you've taken out all your export rules except the anything, match anything, bake, final rule. And merge clothing into figure skeleton is something I always do in Daz characters, no matter whether they have uh, clothing or not, because in some cases you're not real sure what may be clothing. But anyway, we're ready now, so we'll go ahead and accept it and we'll export it. Now from here, we'll go ahead and go back in to 3D Exchange. So let's load Clank in, the one we just exported. We're not going to import animation because there isn't really any animation in Clank. Okay, there he is. Of course, that notice that popped up was about the texture. And you want to, of course, embed your textures when you actually do your final character. It just makes it easier. But here you can see we have our jaw smile. But it's just not much of a morph. So thank goodness. Thank goodness that there is at least a jawbone in this character. So now we're ready to go ahead and convert to standard. Now what we need to do is match the bones. And in this character, that's fairly simple. It's fairly straightforward. We'll start off here at the foot. I'm just going to ignore the toe bone. Now we can go in and map that toe bone later as an extended bone if there was a reason to do so. In his case there might be since uh, there is actually like a metal plate type toe connected. But what we're doing right now is we're just setting up the simple bone structure. Once I get this done then I'll go into the face and set it up. So we're clicking our pelvis. We're just moving along. A lot of times it's experimentation as to what bone you click when you get into the middle area of the character. But right now we're just matching the bones. Very simple. And the head bone. Now we're active to where we can at least go ahead and check. But let's go ahead and do the hands because there's not much to these hands. There's actually only two fingers. And you may find out there's a better mapping. You may choose to map it to a different finger. You can just experiment with this. This does what I like, what I want to do. So there's one hand. Come over here and grab the other hand. Okay, now we're mapped as far as the hands go. Let's go take a look at the head. Okay, right eye. You want to map it to the right eye. Left eye. Click the map to left eye button. Very simple. Jaw. 
click the map to jaw. So all this is very simple. Now in some cases like the right and left toe are unused here. I guess you could if you want to go ahead and map them as extended and they would become available to you uh, when you go into the editor in iClone. There may be a use for it. So generally I'm going to try and map every bone I can even if I don't use them because you never know what future use you may have for this. Now for those of you that are completely new to this that haven't done body rigging in the previous version of this there are several different quick checks and tweaks that we can make while we're at this stage. Uh, in other words, we can come over here and let's go ahead and let's check our basic walk. And that does look good. The hands are colliding some. You could close the hands to do that. But let's say that you needed to adjust that a little bit. Well, in that case, I usually come back and put them in the T-pose. Click off active so you can move it. And I move these up just a little. Now you don't want to move them too much and this is just kind of experimentation on each character because this affects every motion. Oops, I meant the walk. And now that just holds them away a little more. That's something that's more personal preference. Usually also lower three calibration will tell you quite a bit when you're rigging. In this case it's, it's fitting pretty nicely. Of course, we have head calibration. And let's take a look at the fingers, even though they're very simple. You could get a clamping motion if you wanted it. Okay. So, everything as you see is rigged up and that's working pretty nicely right there so I would have to say we're ready to go ahead and convert and now we can come in and work with the expression editor I've opened the expression editor and as you can see these are working but they're not very pronounced so let's go ahead and make them just a little more pronounced this is upward be sure and click set after you do each one or whatever changes you made will be lost. Downward, leftward, rightward, tilt left, tilt right. And as you can see that keeps the more pronounced motions. Now we'll move on to the eyes. Click on the first one rightward. Move the eyes rightward. Leftward. This is a matter of preference as to how much you move them. And then that's down and up. Now our eye tab is set. Now we'll go to the jaw tab. Click on drop jaw. set, leftward, set, rightward, set, and we're through with the jaw tab. Moving on to the Visimi tab, this is something that you're going to need to set something for in every one of these, and that way you won't have any skips when it does its lip sync. Now what we're going to have to do here since we don't actually have phones is we're going to have to kind of create our own. Whether we get close or not uh, it really depends on how much time you want to spend. All we're going to do here is just set a few of them so you can get the general idea of what it is. But you're going to have to make at least something to go into each one of these for it to not skip when it's doing lip sync. So we're going to click on EE and of course we also have our smile over here but it doesn't do a whole lot as you can see. Now we could set that and leave that and we probably will use smile on another one of these keys. But that's not enough for right now. So let's come in here and grab our jawbone. And that's open pretty good size. So let's open it up and let's set it. That's just closed a little more. So you just it always goes back to neutral when you click on each new blank. So you'll have to come back 
and reset it from neutral. So try and keep in mind where your previous settings are. Take a look at these and in some cases you might be able to match them. This is such a simple draw structure that's going to be a little bit difficult. So we're basically just going to do some moves here that may or may not even come close to however much the mouth is actually open. And that's making some using the jawbone. Now let's see. We could come in here with BMP and possibly use a little bit of smile. And maybe down a little and set that. But just whatever you can do to make the mouth move something is better than nothing. Especially when you're talking about these characters that don't exactly have all the bones or, or everything that we need to do everything with. So, as you can see, you just need to go through and set something for each one of these. So that's all we're going to do right now in the Visme tab. You can finish your own out later. Now in the Muscle tab, there's not really anything we can do here. We don't really have the bones necessary, and in a robot, it just depends on how expressive you want them to be. Let's go ahead and move into the Custom tab, and I can at least show you how to do a couple of these. If you wanted to go into the Mouse Puppet and in iClone, and use your upward mouse to trigger a certain type of jaw movement or whatever, maybe the smile, then this is where you would set that up. So we use the upwards to set the smile. We'll move the smile all the way over to 100 and we'll hit set. That way when we move the mouse upwards in the puppet and I clone, he'll smile. Now in this case, you know, jaw bones available. You can turn the head even and set it and that will become part of the custom motion. But now of course you've already got your head turning here. But you may want to use that to add a little more emphasis for something. But this is where you this is strictly up to you as to what you set into it. Okay, we'll go ahead and close out of the expression editor and we're basically ready to go ahead and apply it to iClone. Now here's our character in iClone. So let's take a look at it, let's check it out, let's see if it actually works. Okay, let's check our animation, facial animation. We'll just load a clip. Now you notice it may have stopped there. Skip some words. That's probably those missing phonemes. Alright, let's see how the motion puppet does. Okay. So far so good. Now what we need to do is check the hands just to see if they work. So I am going to go ahead and have both hands clench in a fist temporarily. And that's right at the end, and yes, it looks like it works. Let's go back to the beginning and do it again. And then let's just go somewhere and do it again. Okay, we see that works. Now as an actor, let's see about, look at camera, yes. There's no doubt that works. So far, so good. Now remember, when you're actually converting your character, you're going to want to go in and fill each one of those phonemes so that you won't have skips. But so far, this has turned out to be a pretty good conversion. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our facial puppet. And let's see how that works out. We'll go into the puppet first. come down here to our custom motion and you can see and go into that smile so that works just fine but now let's see what happens when we go into our face key so far so good so you could actually come in and manually key it 
Now let's keep in mind that since this is a character, an actor, we can also use personas with it. So we'll load the G5, Chuck Persona, and here are the perform motions. And of course this also includes movement. And also different personas. Let's see. Let's see how she he would look as Jana. G three Jana. Run forward. I have a female robot, a female clank. Uh, 